the officer has no idea that a head is boiling in the pot on that stove. It's the same head of the woman they're looking for, Lisa Guy, and at this point it's been cooking for over a day. In the bathroom they find two bins of human limbs soaking in a toxic mixture. The suspect behind this gruesome scene is Joel Guy Jr and the human remains marinating in this concoction belong to his parents, Joel and Lisa Guy. This is the story of the boy who boiled his mom and dad right after Thanksgiving dinner. It's March 13th, 1988, and Joel Guy Jr. is born the only child of Joel Guy Sr. and his wife Lisa. Relatives call the boy Joel Michael to distinguish him from his dad, who also has three other daughters from a previous marriage who are much older. It's a happy, blended family that will spend their time together at a manicured, sprawling home on Golden View Lane in West Knox, Tennessee. Now, Joel Michael is not an outgoing kid. He isn't really a standout student either when he attends the Louisiana School for Math, Science, and the Arts. After he graduates in 2006, he spends a semester at George Washington University before dropping out and switching to LSU. There, he studies plastic surgery, but ultimately withdraws in 2015, instead deciding to live a laid-back lifestyle tucked away playing video games in his Baton Rouge apartment. Joel Michael spends nine years in this cycle, regularly changing colleges, switching degrees, until 2016, his parents make an announcement. They tell their now 28-year-old son that they are cutting him off. See, Joel Sr. and Lisa, who've been married for 31 years, are selling the home on Golden View Lane so they can retire closer to the rest of their family. They're no longer going to finance Junior's lifestyle, and he has until the end of the year, December, to get his life and finances back in order. However, the clock isn't just ticking for Joel Michael to get his life together. See, his mom and dad have a timeline as well. But theirs ends in death. November 24th, Thanksgiving Day. It'll be the last dinner in the guy home, that is, before Joel Sr. and Lisa move 90 miles away to their new Mountain View home. There, the family will come together again to celebrate Christmas next month, but they'll never make it, because today, Joel Michael is putting his evil plan into effect. He drives all the way from Baton Rouge to the family home in West Knox, Tennessee, and his half-sisters are also in town with their families to celebrate the holiday. They all enjoy dinner in the Golden View home for one final time, and everything seems normal. There's no hint of the horrors that are about to go down in just 48 hours. It's Saturday, November 26, and Joel Michael is the last guest left at the house, his half-sisters having left the day before. His mom Lisa is out buying groceries while his dad, Joel Sr., is upstairs in the home gym. Quietly, Junior slinks up the steps and ambushes his father armed with a knife. And like a madman, he stabs him again and again all over his body. The 61-year-old knocks over the treadmill, desperately trying to defend himself, but he slashed 40 times. The ceiling and walls are sprayed in red as Joel Sr.'s life drains out of him. The attack is grisly, violent, and wildly chaotic. However, even after his dad is dead, the horrors continue. Junior dismembers his body and tosses each limb on the crimson-soaked carpet floor. Joel Michael then sits and waits for his mom to return home. When Lisa walks through the front door, she's carrying the groceries, and she has no idea what's already happened on the second floor, nor does she know that she's next. As the unsuspecting mom heads upstairs, Junior jumps out and starts wildly attacking her. He wails on his mom with such force that she breaks nine ribs. The 55-year-old is stabbed over three dozen times until she's left lifeless. As if this isn't disturbing enough, Joel Jr. proceeds to use his bare hands to snap, and his mother's head is decapitated from her spine. He proceeds to place it in a water-filled pot and then turns on the stove. 
just like dad, Lisa's body is also dismembered before Joel Jr. takes his parents and places them in two 45-gallon bins. They're filled up with strong chemicals capable of dissolving pretty much anything, and Joel Michael pierces the skin to make the process go by even faster. When Monday arrives and Lisa, who's known as extremely responsible, doesn't show up to work, her colleagues get worried and give her a phone call. She doesn't pick up, so they call the police to do a welfare check, and when they arrive at the home on Golden View Lane, they see the two Guy family cars parked outside in the driveway. They peek through the glass on the front door and see what appears to be groceries strewn across the hallway. On the other side of the house, the back door is missing the handle, and out through is coming a strong smell. A mixture of chemicals and perhaps something decaying. A deputy then retrieves the garage door opener from one of the cars, and as they make their way inside the home, what they see is appalling. The floors and walls are all splattered in red, and lying on the floor is a hand not connected to anyone. Before they can get any further, they're overtaken by the intense fumes and heat swirling about inside, so they make a call to the sheriff's department requesting for backup. They ask for some hazmat suits to protect them from this poisonous air, as a few of the officers are already getting sick. Once back inside, a maroon trail leads investigators to a haunting scene. There are two giant rubber vats filled with body parts floating in some sort of acid. Only one of the torsos still has a head, and when it's lifted up, all that's left is bone. The other head is found boiling in a pot on the kitchen stove, and it belongs to Lisa Guy. Throughout the home, there's an array of chemicals, bleach, hydrogen peroxide, sewer cleaner, and acid, all mixed with the stench of death. Several weapons are also discovered. Knives, a sledgehammer, scissors, and a hacksaw, each covered in dark magenta. The thermostat is also set to 90 degrees, further adding to the already unbearable atmosphere inside. Investigators also find a notebook. It's an explicit step-by-step -step guide with reminders such as turn up head as high as it goes, dash, speeds up decomposition, flush chunks down the toilet, not the garbage disposal, how to base their bodies to accelerate tissue breakdown, and bring blender and food grinder, dash, grind meat. The booklet is in Joel Michael's writing, and each chapter is more disturbing than the next, as you realize just how well thought out this plan is. The manual that prosecutors later call the Book of Premeditation also lists a motive. See, Joel Jr. wanted to cash out on his mother's half a million dollar life insurance policy. And in a section of the diary called Assets, he writes, Money mine. I get the whole thing. Basically, he's implying that if he kills his dad too, he doesn't have to split the policy. Apparently though, Joel Michael doesn't read the fine print of his mom's policy, but more on that in a moment, and trust me, you're gonna wanna hear it. This sinister journal also reveals Junior's plans to frame his dad for the murder. He writes that he'll remove his dad's hands and use them to cover up his fingerprints. Then he'll plant some of the skin under his mom's fingernails, so none of this ties back to him. But despite these cold, calculated efforts, Joel Guy Jr. is arrested and charged with two counts of premeditated murder and three counts of felony murder, along with two counts of disturbing a corpse. He pleads not guilty, and the trial begins in September 2020. State prosecutors warn that because of the graphic details of this case, it'll be unlike any other trial in US history. And as the specifics are discussed and appalling images are displayed, several family members are forced to step outside of the courtroom. The jury's shown a sickening 30-minute video of the crime scene, along with the photos of Joelle and Lisa Guy. Meanwhile, Junior smirks, smiles, even yawns while in court. He shows absolutely no remorse. 
appearing as though he's proud of his work. When prosecutors present the murder manuscript, the defense argues that it can't be his because there are no fingerprints found on the book. However, over the course of a four-day trial, 700 pieces of evidence are admitted, and Joel Guy Jr. is found guilty on all counts. He receives five life sentences with the possibility of parole in 51 years. Man is not and should not be getting out anytime soon. I mean, his parents literally supported him for years and he shows his appreciation by trying to kill them for some life insurance money. Luckily though, he's incompetent enough to leave behind an entire book of evidence and not to read the fine print on his mom's policy, which clearly specifies that he isn't a beneficiary. So say Joel Jr. had killed her and somehow managed to get away with it, the insurance company wouldn't have sent him any money. In other words, he did this whole thing for nothing. 